Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. In this series, I'm building a piano box with a Raspberry Pi, and today I'm adding an LC display and a button to turn on and off reverb. For this to work, we will do some copy and paste C programming and some breadboard construction. Here we go. This is part two of a series of videos, and in the first part, which should be linked here, um, I showed uh, how to uh, download and install a Soundphone player and the Jack Demon, and I installed an audio card and a MIDI keyboard, and I showed you how to connect all of this and set up the software so you can play the piano. And today I want to automate this process, uh, so you don't need to enter all those command lines, and I want to add an LCD screen and a button for turning on and off reverb, and and um, yeah, let's see what we need for this. So in hardware, we need an LC display, a push button, four separate wires, two 10 kilo ohm resistors, and a ribbon cable with at least four connectors. And I'm still using my breadboard here. This is just a board with a lot of pinholes, which are connected to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO port, so I can easily move around wires and components in order to test things. The LC display has four pin connectors, and if you read the labels on them, and then examine the GPIO port of the Raspberry Pi, you will find them. there are some pins labeled the same. So all you need to do is connect the wires accordingly. This is quite easy. The button needs to be connected to a GPIO pin 26, to a 3.3 volts connector, and to ground and you will need to set up the resistors, as you can see on this photo right here. And once that is done, you can now install the software, and uh, here's how to do that. Now we need to install some software packages to make the LCD, the button, and the reverb work. So in a command line window, enter the commands shown on screen right now. They're also in this video's description for you to copy and paste. This will install the wiring Pi library for the LCD and the button, and it will also install JConvolver, which is a standalone convolution reverb that plugs into Jack. Now, in order to test the reverb, follow the steps in the first video to get the piano up and running, and then enter the lines shown on screen right now. This connects the input of the reverb to the piano and the output of the reverb to your system's audio output. Now, what is a convolution reverb? Basically, it's a clever Fourier transformation which takes one sound signal and uses it as a reverb model for another signal. So, for example, if I record a short burst of noise with a big reverb on my synth and load that audio file into JConvolver, we get this result. So basically, you can record the reverb characteristics of any room and use them in your convolution reverb, which is quite cool. Here are some more examples. Hey, Future Floyd here. While reviewing this video, I noticed I failed to mention um, this reverb will work best if you have lots of RAM. It doesn't tax the CPU a lot, so it'll work on the Raspberry Pi 3B, but you can only use small reverb files. So for this video, I opted to use the Raspberry Pi 400. And now let's continue.
Okay, now it's time to wrap this all up into a small hacky C program. I won't bore you with details here, but basically my program defines a run level that starts at zero and goes up to four or five, and then it issues some system calls to launch all the apps we used so far, beginning with asfiz and a to j midi d, and then searching for your midi keyboard with jack lsp minus c, then connecting that, then launching the reverb, then connecting that to jack daemon, and so on. I don't often program in C, so I had to face some challenges here. So for example, you find a routine here which reads text input line by line searching for certain strings, which involves some minor memory management, and I also had to research how on earth to launch as a background task an app that expects user input on the command line once it's running, and I solved that by feeding that a prompt an endless loop of nothing through the shell. <laughs> which is quite hacky. Yeah, now we can compile this program using the command shown on screen, which tells the C compiler about all the libraries we need in this program, and then you can start the program. And it will show you the name of the instrument on the LCD, and whether you've connected the MIDI keyboard or not, and whether you've switched on reverb or not. And here are some more examples, and then let's wrap this video up. Oh, by the way, the configuration files for jconvolver reside in user share jconvolve configuration. And uh, you just open them in a text editor and then you just change the WAV file in the end of this file and then save it. Oh, by the way, if you like content like this, and if you want this DIY series to continue, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you want to support what I'm doing here financially, buying all these Raspberry Pi components isn't exactly cheap at the moment. You can do so by joining my Patreon, becoming a YouTube member, or buying some of my music over on Bandcamp. Links are in this video's description. Thank you!
yeah, that's it for today. A reverb effect and an LC display added to my piano box. Next time I will add the knob to select sounds and perhaps start building a fancy case. And if you found this interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel. As always, thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.